welcome to another episode of Let's Talk Tobago. I'm Davia Chambers and thanks for joining us. Today we're at Kuso Drive Crown Point at a cozy seaside villa, Cote C, Cote La. Come along with us as we take you on a tour of this inviting coastal property while bringing you up to date on all the major stories happening right here in Tobago. So stay with us for all the details starting with this week's headlines. The expansion of Tobago's power plant means more capacity and fewer outages. A new healthcare reporting software system is expected to enhance maternity care in Tobago. We have highlights from this year's Youth Empowerment Forum and later Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute students take customers to Africa. We've got these stories and more when Let's Talk Tobago returns. Stay with us. Cotesi Cotella is a Patwa term which means so they say and with dramatic coastal views, a desired location and modern conveniences, many guests describe it as a dream villa, so they say. So why not come see for yourself? In our first story, the Cove power plant has gotten a much needed expansion. It means more electrical capacity and more potential for development. Crystal George explains. The Cove power plant was recently recommissioned after an upgrade at the facility. The works have brought the island an extra 105 megawatts of electrical power to meet the demands of a developing Tobago, which means Tobago won't experience frequent power outages anymore. The project was completed on time and within budget, a little under $150 million, according to Minister of Public Utilities Robert Lahunt. The demand for electricity here in Tobago at this point, peak demand, is just about 55 megawatts. So whether it's 105, whether it's 98, or whether it's 100 to round up, we are close to double the capacity that we are now, and which places Tobago in a great position to be, to be able to take off and improve themselves and increase the, the energy capacity going forward. Chief Secretary Kelvin Charles says the project was part of the promise given to the people of Tobago to develop the island. He believes it's also a new beginning for the Trinidad and Tobago Electricity Commission, TNTEC, and its operations on the island. This commissioning today is expected to assist TNTEC in meeting the projected demand for Tobago. I am also glad to understand that with this expansion, a disruption in the supply of power from Trinidad is less likely to affect us in Tobago, as Tobago's capacity will now be able to hold its own. The Chief Secretary says it will also have a positive impact on other sectors like tourism, assuring that visitors to the island will have a comfortable stay. Is this commission in a sigh of relief of sorts for our locals and domestic tourists alike? It is also timely because we would also want to give our foreign tourists a vacation experience that is second to none. And this in part depends on an adequate and reliable supply of electricity. The Cove Eco Industrial and Business Park is one of the first eco industrial parks within the Caribbean. The plant allows for increased energy independence on the island and the potential to begin exporting electricity to Trinidad. 
I'm Crystal George for Let's Talk Tobago. The location of this villa is ideal. It's tucked away at the end of a quiet street, giving you the tranquility of the Caribbean Sea without placing you right in the bustling heart of Crown Point. Now, healthcare in Tobago continues to advance. This time, a digital record-keeping system is being introduced. It's expected to enhance the treatment of pregnant women and postnatal care of new mothers and their newborns. Omodara Mills has this story. A new digital system will transform the health care received by pregnant women and their babies. Information on their visits and treatment will soon be accessible via the perinatal information system, SIP+. This electronic record database is being introduced at the maternity department of the Scarborough General Hospital. It will make it easier and faster for doctors and nurses to retrieve information so they can provide optimal care to their patients. For now, we're doing it on hard copy. It systematizes the data that is collected um, across health regions, across healthcare institutions, and you're able to produce data um, records on the woman, uh, on her baby, at the click of a button. Um, so it gives you information that you can use for auditing, that you could use for point of care um, for the woman once she's pregnant and beyond. The Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, is providing technical training for local medical staff. The rollout of SIP Plus is also being spearheaded by the Tobago Regional Health Authority, the TRHA. Doctors believe digital access to patient records will be particularly useful for high-risk cases such as preeclampsia and gestational diabetes. With the information entered, we are able to analyze the data almost immediately. We are able to look at trends in care, we are able to identify conditions, high-risk conditions, even before the patients deliver. And another feature of it is that for the health centers in particular, we'll be able to identify, okay, well, are there certain conditions affecting people from Charlottesville, which is different from people going to Buku? SIP Plus is a secure and a free system for use by the TRHA. It's also expected to improve the formulation of maternal health policies. Well, this system will give us the information to identify where we need to focus care. Previously, people would guess, okay, well, how many um, teenagers gave birth. By us entering all the information, we will actually have the hard data so that when you focus awareness campaign, it is based on evidence rather than just guesswork. And then having the information entered, we'll be able to track whether our interventions are actually improving the care or having the effect that they're supposed to have. It's hoped that the maternity department's electronic medical record-keeping system will be fully operational by next year. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Sitting on a half an acre of land, the two-story structure of Cote C, Cote La can comfortably accommodate nine guests at once. A glass-framed staircase leads to four spacious ensuite bedrooms, each with a view of the ocean. So Finance Week is aimed at encouraging economic development in Tobago, and this year's Youth Empowerment Forum continued this trend, encouraging young entrepreneurs to embrace technology. Have a look. Economic development isn't just about developing established businesses. It's also important to encourage growth through the younger generation to strengthen the economy in the long term. This was the main objective for the 8th Youth Empowerment Forum hosted recently in Tobago during Finance Week. Young Tobagonians, including students, youth organizations and entrepreneurs, are being urged to become agents of change in Tobago in the sphere of business. How does someone become a successful entrepreneur? How do you become a successful business person? You should think about yourself as businesses, not as individuals that are selling fruits. You're a business. If you're making clothing like we are, you, what you're doing is a business. You're not just a tailor or a seamstress or making curtains. You're a business. So knowing who you are, where you want to be, and how to get there is an exercise that is essential in developing your business. The first youth forum was held in 2011 to inspire young Tobagonians to become business owners. This year, emphasis was on incorporating technology in business. 
Utilize technology. Utilize the internet to advance your journey as it relates to developing yourself and developing your business. As it relates to the team today, utilizing technology for growth, there is no better time to share this kind of information with our young people in Tobago and in Trinidad too, because we are at the cusp of a huge amount of development taking place in Tobago. The forum also featured two panel discussions. They centered on leveraging technology and innovation to transform the business landscape on the island. Being faced with your certain challenges, you ever felt like giving up? And what kept you motivated if you ever felt like giving up? And what tips you could give to upcoming in entrepreneurs when they face with the challenge of giving up? The challenges of giving up wasn't so much in relation to entrepreneurship. The challenges is really wanting to come back home. But coming from where I came from, I was only the second person that ever left that village. And so I couldn't come back home without doing something meaningful with my life. So I persevered and persevered. The Youth Empowerment Forum was hosted by the Division of Finance and the Economy at the Magdalena Grand Beach and Gulf Resort. I'm Kuhn De Freitas for Let's Talk to Bigo. Community council members are improving their skills so they can become better community advocates. We'll tell you how right after this break. Stay with us. The ground floor has a beautifully decorated open plan living space that leads into the kitchen. You can request a chef or create your own meals with the use of the herb garden growing outdoors. Now community councils are very important to society, but they must stay relevant and be well organized in order to function effectively as community advocates. This was the inspiration behind their most recent training session. We hear more from Omodara Mills. The expansion of information and communications technology, ICT, means you don't have to be face-to-face -to, -face to have a meeting. Now, village council members are being urged to make use of tools such as emails and social media. They help community-based organizations stay relevant and attract more young people. This advice is coming from communications consultant Michael Stewart, who presented on conducting effective meetings at a one-day training session for community representatives. Young people want certain things to be able to attract them, and they are very technological, but we have many of the village councils still in the chalk and board, so they write up their notices on a blackboard in the village with chalk and so on. That only at, um, attracts a certain type of person, which would have been the older generation, but it does not really attract the younger generation. So we have to find some way to give them notice of meetings, engage them through WhatsApp and Facebook and Twitter and so on, and also make plans that would make them feel that this is something I want to be a part of. Jean Scott Henry, president of the Canby Mount Pleasant Village Council, says she appreciates the advice Mr. Stewart shared at the session. It is very important for village council members, you know, because member, village council members are members that volunteer to attend the village council, right? And you as the president or you have, as a member need to control the meeting and to know how to control docking meeting so that you could have the positiveness out of the meeting. Approximately 20 village council representatives attended the session. They also learned about financial management, getting grants and donations, and about promoting entrepreneurship within their communities. They are hoping all the participants will put the knowledge to good use. As a youth, I try to know a lot that is taking place in the world. 
um, in, I'm in a village council in Plymouth, and the more you know, is the more that you can pursue that. So I like to be around the youth so on. And I would like to move my village council, which is Plymouth, further into what it entails to be a part of the big and helping people to do the right things. I expect coming out of the, the, the day's activities that the association of uh, village council can play a more active role in ensuring that there is compliance with the regulations or the rules that are there to, to, to ensure that the uh, association is very effective and, um, and efficient in its uh, distribution and carrying out of its duties. The training for community council members was facilitated by the Division of Community Development, Enterprise Development and Labor as part of Community Development Week. I'm Amadara Mills for Let's Talk Tobago. Outdoors has all the ingredients for an unforgettable vacation. The villa has a majestic swimming pool deck with modern furnishings and an ocean view. There's also a state-of-the-art barbecue grill and an outdoor dining space. So how much do you know about Tobago and its tourism sector? Well, several of the island's primary school students showed off their knowledge in a recent competition, but there can only be one winner. Here's this story. We just won the primary school tourism awareness quiz 2018. Yeah! These are the students from PLLF, Pentecostal Light and Life Foundation Primary School one of the 18 schools to take part in the annual Tourism Awareness Primary School Quiz competition. And this year, they are the champions. Our strategy was that, that we get all our answers correct and the, all the answers that we bounded from the other team. The four-member team of Abigail Daniel, Brandon Mark Brown, Tikaya Dennis and Jaden Roberts won with a total of 190 points in the final round competing against Signal Hill Government Primary School. Signal Hill placed second with 160 points. As expected, teachers played a major role in getting students ready for the competition. What I had to do was tell stories, have them understand the content, in terms of have it um, presented to them in a realistic way so that they understand what they are learning. So when the words come up, they understand what they are saying. The Tourism Awareness Quiz is another way to educate young children on the island about the tourism industry. An international tourist is someone who goes, who leaves their country and goes to another country. But it, is, but it is not in the same geographical region. A regional tourist is someone who, who leaves their country and goes to another country, but it is in the same geographic region. A domestic tourist is someone who resides in their country and goes to another part of the country. During the competition, students learned other valuable lessons. Students should not only be given knowledge or the chance to learn only within the classroom setting. So they could have learned things about interacting with others, how to compete and so on. I learned how to be a part of a team and that your teammates can really help you in any competition. The participating schools and students walked away from the primary school tourism awareness quiz competition with trophies, cash prizes and gift vouchers. From the Division of Tourism, Culture and Transportation, I am Juliet James reporting for Let's Talk Tobago. At Cote C. Cote La, guests can request in villa massages to help them unwind. Or, if it's adventure that you desire, the villa is a short commute away from some of the island's top restaurants and bars, beaches and nightlife. Now globally, technology is enabling rapid growth of businesses. Tobago's entrepreneurs are being urged to make the best use of the technology at their fingertips. Here's more in this story. Set sail and stay afloat. That was the title for a recent short course with the Youth Energized for Success Yes program. And after completing the course, residents around Tobago are now equipped to stay afloat in the world of business. In their last session, 
The budding entrepreneurs were taught how to utilize digital marketing successfully in their various businesses. They learned that digital marketing extends beyond internet marketing to include channels that do not require the use of the internet. Maybe we're running a, a service in a mall and there's advertisements running all over. There's no internet. There's an intranet and everything runs from a server or from even a cell phone. Because we do some connections at some malls, right? The internet, where the clients would call and say, hey, happy hour by my bar now. And you could pull over on the highway, pull out your phone, select the bar, and write up happy hour, beers, $5. And you know in Trinidad. Constructing great content is important when crafting messages for different mediums. And where you want to be. Remember, digital marketing is without borders. So if you want to be in Macy's, you plan a strategy to get there. And you will. You just have to believe in yourself. Digital marketing benefits businesses of all sizes by providing access to a mass market. The main advantage of digital marketing is that a targeted audience can be reached in a cost-effective and measurable way. Secretary of Finance and the Economy, Joel Jack, is pleased that the participants are seeking the necessary knowledge to become leading entrepreneurs. From where I sit, I know the kind of resources that will be deployed into BIG over the next couple of years. You have a wonderful opportunity starting now. And you're doing the right thing. You're not rushing, just rushing into business. But you're hungry for the information. You're hungry for the know-how, how to get it done correctly. The workshop ran for five days and catered to young entrepreneurs in Tobago. Other sessions covered topics like bookkeeping, budgeting, and financing options for small businesses. The YES program is an initiative of the YES unit under the Division of Finance and the Economy. Coming up next, students of the Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute take their guests to Africa. We'll hear from their instructors when Let's Talk Tobago returns. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Tropicus Beach Hotel has been in existence since 1979. Our mandate is to be the number one tourism product here in Tobago. We achieve this through the high quality service from our staff, through continuous upgrade of our plans, which include the rooms and our grounds. Our guests on leaving are totally satisfied and they always promise that they would return. I'm Anderson McPhee, General Manager of Tropicus Beach Hotel and Tourism is all a wee thing. Cote C, Cote La is chic, elegant, and beckoning you to relax. But if you want to explore Tobago, the Villas management team at Hove Estates would be delighted to help arrange that experience. And speaking of experience, guests recently visiting the Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute were taken on a short trip to North Africa through cuisine. It's all in this next story. Tobago got a taste of Africa, Morocco to be precise, through the student dinner program hosted by students of the Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute. From decor to the management of the front of the house to the preparation of the food, it was all done by the students. First year student of culinary arts, Daniel Stewart, hosted this event at the institution. I am hosting dinner number six and it's to get a hands-on experience on how the food and beverage service operates. So even if you know you're doing culinary, you know how it goes outside. So 
your back of the house is front of the house so your back of the house you basically know how the front of the house has been run so it is a must you know you must be through the food and beverage service you know about the proper etiquettes table service stuff like that yeah. i am now able to fully understand how to serve guests and knew how to cook but to serve guests you know you know how to do it the proper table manner so it also will cut costs if i have a business the budding chefs and hospitality professionals got a chance to showcase their work to 40 guests. To be very honest with you, this is um, one of the classes that I am most proud of, that I am most proud of. They have gone the extra mile to ensure that, number one, that their dinners are sold out and to ensure that their decor and their research, their decor is in keeping with the research that they do. Um, the first four dinners we've had were under uh, Chef Arthur, who is having dinner here tonight with his mom. And uh, it was a food prep two class. Uh, the dinners now starting last week and the rest ending up uh, showcasing the students of a little higher caliber doing the international cuisine. The themes of each dinner are chosen by the chefs. Well, for my class, food prep two um, is different from international cuisine. I normally make all the menus first four menus but I still put these students through the process of researching every recipe, costing the menus, um, finding the regions the items are from. The students however create the meal and so far the chefs are satisfied with the work of the students and expect them to develop their skills even more as the dinners continue. Well Taste of Africa we have we started with kaftas and the kaftas is really uh, is like mincemeat that we form into an oval shape that is baked in the oven and then baked on coals, followed by, we have the soup, which is a chickpea soup, followed by a salad, which is like tomato, cucumber, lettuce, with a, I believe it's a honey dressing. Then you have things like chicken, fish, um, the chicken, Chicken goes with fufu, which is a well-known dish in Africa, but we also infuse it with um, buttered provision. The fish goes with couscous, the meat goes with fufu, and the buttered provision as well, and then we have the vegetable that is common throughout all the plates. Besides that, we have the dessert. The dessert is a, well, we call it spiral cake, but traditionally in Morocco, it's called serpent cake. The student dinners are hosted each semester. The remaining two for this semester will give patrons a taste of North America and Europe. The Tobago Hospitality and Tourism Institute is an accredited tertiary institution founded in 1997 to address the need for trained professionals in the growing tourism and hospitality industries. It's time for you to share your views with us in our Have Your Say segment. We'll now have a look at who had their say this week. No one can ask question. What's the question? Um, 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 that's fruits, vegetables, you know the basic proportions that we're supposed to eat and also exercise regularly. I enjoy um, eating healthy food, love vegetables and fruits and that kind of thing. Um, try to minimize my meat, you know not that I don't eat meat but I try to minimize it. I eat from all the food groups of course, I eat a lot of fruits, I stay away from snacks, I'm actually I can't eat a lot of snacks, I get you know, headaches and stuff. So yes, I drink a lot of water and juices, natural juices of course. Then after, I, I play a lot of sports. I try to eat from all the various um, food groups. I try to stay away from salt because we all know that African persons of African descent, they are ones that are prone to high blood pressure and so on, so I really try to stay away from that. We close yet another edition of Let's Talk Tobago and as always we thank you for watching. 
Please email us with your comments or queries about the program and be sure to visit our website, like our Office of the Chief Secretary Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Now for more information on Villa Cote C, Cote La, you can contact Hove Estate at 391-2073. From our house to yours, I'm Davia Chambers, along with the Department of Information, Office of the Chief Secretary, Tobago House of Assembly, wishing you a safe and very productive week.